It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. The problem with facilitation payments. The original versions of the FCPA enacted in 1977 contain an exception for payments made to non-U.S. officials who performed duties that were essentially ministerial or clerical. In 88, Congress responded by amending the FCPA under the Omnibus Trade and Competitiveness Act to clarify the scope of the FCPA's prohibitions on bribery, including the scope of permitted facilitation payments. An expanded definition of routine government action was included in the final version of the bill, reflecting the intent of Congress that the exceptions apply only to the performance of duties listed in the subcategories of the statute and actions of a similar nature. Congress also meant to make clear that ordinary and commonly performed actions with respect to permits and licenses would not be included in those government approvals involving exercise of discretion by a government official where the actions were the functional equivalent of obtaining or retaining for business or with or directing business to a person. Under Section 15, Section 78, DD, etc. of the FCPA, an explicit exception to bribery prohibition for any facilitation or expediting payment to a foreign official, political party, political or party official for the purpose of which to expedite or secure the performance of a routine duty was also excluded. The statute lists Several examples of what is considered a routine government action they include obtaining permits, licenses, and other official documents to qualify a person to do business in a country, processing government papers such as visas and work orders, providing police protection, mail pickup, delivery and scheduling inspections associated with contract performance or transits of goods across a country and providing phone service, power and water supply, and loading and uploading cargo or protecting perishable products from deterioration and actions of a similar nature. There is no monetary threshold for determining when a payment crosses the line between a facilitation payment and a bribe. The accounting provisions of the FCPA require that facilitation payments must be accurately reflected in an issuer's books and records, even if the payment itself is permissible under the anti-bribery provisions of the FCPA. Facilitation payments carry legal risks even if they are permitted under the anti-bribery laws of a particular country. In the U.S., enforcement agencies have taken a narrow view of the exception and have successfully prosecuted FCPA violations stemming for payments that could arguably be considered permissible facilitation payments. Violations of accounting and record-keeping provisions of the FCPA are also more likely when a company makes facilitation payments. Countries are increasingly enforcing domestic bribery laws that prohibit such payments. Companies that allow facilitation payments face a slippery slope to educate their employees on the nuances of permissible payments in order to avoid prosecution for prohibited bribes. Additionally, facilitation payments are often the subject of follow-ons in more comprehensive FCPA enforcement action. While the anti-bribery provisions of the FCPA permit facilitation payments, the accounting and and record-keeping provisions of the law nevertheless require companies making such payments to accurately record them in their books and records. Companies or individuals may be reluctant to properly record such payments as it shows some semblance of impropriety and effectively creates a permanent record of a violation of a local law. However, failure to properly record such expenditures may result in prosecution by the Securities and Exchange Commission even if the underlying payments themselves are permissible. Corporate approaches to facilitation payments may exceed the legitimate scope and applicability of the exception. Businesses still struggle with how to address facilitation payments exception in their compliance policies and procedures if the subject is covered at all. Businesses should be wary of allowing employees to decide on their own whether a particular payment is permissible. Unless such payment is barred completely or such payment is subject to pre-approval, which in many cases, such as passport control and other examples, may be unrealistic. There is always a risk that an employee, agent, or other person whose action may be attributed to the company will make a payment in reliance on the exception when, in fact, the exception does not apply. In addition, the temptation to record improperly, otherwise permissible facilitation payments can bring liability. 
So what are today's three key takeaways? Number one, many companies still struggle with facilitation payments. It's pretty clear why that reason still exists is that although there are some listed categories within the FCPA itself, it's not clear what a facilitation payment is. Further, because there's no standard or total amount or individual amount of payment listed in the FCPA, it's unclear how much dollar amount could there be. There have been enforcement actions as low as $3,000 for a facilitation payment. And I guarantee you, depending on the circumstances, $3,000 would be way too much money. Walmart got in trouble for payments of $75,000 or up to $75,000 to obtain permits and licenses. Whatever $75,000 is, it certainly is not a facilitation payment. What are the five listed purposes of facilitation payments? And this is something that you really need to focus on. So it's obtaining permits, licenses, and other official government documents to qualify a person to do business, processing government papers such as visas or work orders, providing police protection, mail pickup, delivery, and scheduling inspections associated with contract performance or the transit of goods, and finally, phone service, power, water supply, loading and unloading cargo, or protecting perishable products from deterioration. There's some pretty clear categories, but the key is that your people have to be trained on these. If they know this inside and out, that's certainly going to work well for them. But if they don't, if they generally have the idea that any license I need, I can pay a bribe for and claim it as a facilitation payment, that's just not going to work. And finally, number three, this facilitation payment exception is narrowly construed by both the courts and the Department of Justice. It is often the subject of a follow-on action, meaning if there is a larger or more significant FCPA violation and the DOJ starts digging into your facilitation payments and they find problems with either the way they're recorded or the actual amounts paid, that will be added on as negative facts for a potential fine and penalty. I hope you will enjoy the entire month on written standards and that you will listen in again where we explore another topic. If I could ask you to do, would you pass on to at least one person this podcast series on the nuts and bolts of compliance as I'm trying to expand my audience base for 31 days to a more effective compliance program. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow where I take up another topic in innovation and compliance. Thanks again for listening. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.